lesson five in science. Um, last week we looked at, or last lesson we looked at exploring uh, safety around the home with electricity, but now we're moving on to professional safety. So um, we'll be looking at what professionals do, but also revising some of our previous learning. All right, so I want you to start with a bit of practice. I want you to draw and label a circuit diagram. Uh, that has a battery, a switch, a light bulb, a buzzer, and wires. All right, pause the video and do that now. Okay, let's see whether your diagram looks something like this. Now, as you can see here, um, you've got each of those components labelled, but a better scientific drawing doesn't have the labels because each of those symbols there is universally recognised as the symbol that can be used for each of those. Don't forget the alternate symbol for a light bulb has that cross instead of this curve here. All right, so in previous lessons, we learned that everything uses, or that uses electricity contains electrical circuits to allow the electricity to flow from the power source and around the circuit. Electrical circuits in home, our homes need a substantial power source, and so most homes are connected to mains electricity. And mains electricity is generated in a power station and travels through a network of power lines to each individual household. The electricity enters the house through the electricity meter, where circuit breakers split the electricity flow and transfer it to each of the electrical circuits in the house. There's a diagram to show how it starts at the power station. Now the transformer, um, it says there steps up the voltage for transmission. It goes through transmission lines and no doubt you've seen these large electrical towers uh, all in straight lines uh, across the countryside. They then go to these transformers and whether you've been observant or not, these do exist around the neighbourhood. Uh, and then from here, they go through individual lines to our households. And if you look outside on the power poles, you'll see uh, a transformer on the power poles, which uh, steps down the voltage before it enters our house. Now, a typical household has many electrical circuits and so coming in from the external power pole through our meter, and in this particular diagram, it shows how the mains uh, breaks it up for the garage, hot water, lights, a second light, two separate power um, circuits. The oven is on its own separate circuit, as is the air conditioner. So if you wanna pause and have a good look at all of the different lines here, as you can see, the lights travel through in one part of the house and are separate lights in the second part of the house here. There is also a further key down the bottom to show the difference between types of lights and types of switches or power points. So if you want to have a good look at that, you can pause the video there and um, have a look at that. So pause now if you're going to pause for a while and I'll keep moving. All right, now it talks here about what mains look like. So your home will have something like this. This is a newer type of mains, but each of these are where the separate um, different elements that control these are. So they're like safety switches. And so if you have a surge of electricity, it will cut it off at individual points or it can cut it off to the whole house. The older types of mains uh, or meter boxes looked a bit like that. And here, this particular meter showed how much electricity was being used. And the little wheel there would spin when electricity was underway. And these were the different fuse switches. This is the newer type, as I said. All right, so it's important that electrical circuits don't get overloaded. And that's why houses have a number of different circuits. And um, appliances that use a large amount of electricity over a short period of time usually, usually have their own circuit. And that's why 
in the example of the house diagram there before, the oven and the hot water system were on their own separate ones. So what I want you to do is compare that circuit you drew right at the beginning of this lesson with the household circuit and think about what are the similarities. So that's my diagram from the beginning of the circuit for the very first one. And that's a small version of the household circuit to remind you of what it contains. So have a think about what the similarities between those are. If you want to pause the video to have a little bit longer, you can. Otherwise, here are similarities. They both have switches. Now that's important to control when you want electricity to flow. They both require power sources. Wires are in both to carry that flow of electricity. And of course, for safety reasons, they both must have insulating materials. All right, so now we look at professional electrical safety. And we'll watch a video there um, to have a look at what goes on there. It's actually a PowerPoint, so I'll just go out of this one and into this one. And it's opening now. So it's all about protective equipment for electricians who are the professionals that deal with our electricity. Electricity is dangerous, very dangerous in fact, and there are a range of jobs that work with electricity and electrical appliances. People in those jobs follow strict safety protocols with their clothing, equipment and behaviour to stay safe. When electricians are working in residential situations, for example in a household, they disconnect the electricity from the power source before they start working. A test instrument is then used to prove that there is no electricity left in the circuits or electrical appliances. So while testing to ensure the power is off, electricians should wear a minimum of safety boots, long sleeve cotton shirt, safety glasses, insulated gloves if there is a risk assessment that deems it necessary to do that. When working on household repairs, electricians should wear a minimum of those things that you can read for yourself there. Now, have you ever noticed power lines along the street? Electricity is transferred from the power stations where it is generated along those big metal wires, either above the ground through power lines, but they can also be below the ground to houses and businesses. You will find in some suburbs there aren't actually any power lines. And if you don't spot any like that, then clearly they travel below the ground. Electricity can't be disconnected to power lines when electricians need to work on them. So these electricians are called live linesmen and they need to wear more safety clothing than electricians working in houses because in houses they can actually disconnect the electricity. So, in addition to the things that the um, electricians had, you can see there's things like a hard hat, a safety harness, and it says three pairs of gloves, one cotton inner glove, one insulating rubber, and one leather to protect the insulating rubber glove. So it's layers of protection there. And there's a diagram or a label to show each of those parts. I'll let you have a look at that for a moment. You'd need to have a great deal of knowledge when working with equipment like that. Not for me, I'm afraid. All right, and electricians also use a range of tools and equipment to help them do their job safely. Many of the handheld tools are encased in thick rubber or plastic and they're insulated up to a thousand volts. And you can see the rubber handles. All right, so look at the pictures on the next two slides and can you identify the personal protective um, gear that the electricians are using here?
Okay, I'll get out of that one and go back to where we were looking. All right, so people use scientific knowledge about conductors, insulators and electricity every day to ensure safety. Electricity has become an essential part of our everyday lives and many decisions are made by individuals and by the community to ensure electricity is used safely. For example, if a piece of toast gets stuck in the toaster, then someone with scientific knowledge, like you, of conductors, insulators and electricity will know that they must disconnect the toaster plug from the power point and then use a utensil with an insulated handle to remove that piece of toast so to avoid coming in contact with electricity. A community uses scientific knowledge of electricity to make light switches out of plastic and insulating material so that people do not come into contact with electricity when they're turning lights on and off. Two very common and very simple ways to stay safe around electricity. And that's the end of that lesson on um, how professionals stay safe. But it's also really reinforcing that whole idea of being safe around electricity and the knowledge, the scientific knowledge that we can use to help keep us safe. All right, guys, cheers now. Stay safe and we'll talk to you soon.